So now let's put everything together and we will do this in the slam 10 e correction file. So as usual it starts with our particle class where each particle consists of a pose and one position and covariance entry for every landmark. And then we have the function g for the state transition and the move function which we used earlier to build our prediction step. Then we have the function h and the Jacobian of h and then all those functions which you implemented earlier. So you'll have just to copy your previous solution there. And then finally, here is the final function you'll have to implement. And don't worry, it's only very few lines of code. So first of all, you'll have to compute the likelihoods that the given measurement is due to any of the landmarks in the particle. And you implemented the corresponding function earlier. And this can be done just by calling the function above. Now if the likelihood list is empty, which is the case if the current number of landmarks in the particle is zero, or if the maximum of all the likelihoods is smaller than a correspondence likelihood threshold, then here we have to call the code which adds a new landmark and we will return exactly the same threshold. Now in the other case, the maximum of the likelihoods is greater or equal to the minimum correspondence likelihood so here you'll have to add some code which finds this maximum and also the argument of the maximum, so the index of the landmark which corresponds to the maximum likelihood. Then here you'll have to update the Kalman filter of the landmark with this corresponding index. So this is very few lines of code and mostly it's just about calling routines from above. Now let's have a look at the fast slam class. Now this has a constructor which is followed by the prediction function and we used that earlier so it's not modified at all. Now here's the update and compute weights function which has been discussed earlier. So it mainly sets up an empty list of weights and does a loop over all particles inside of which there's a loop over all measurements. It accumulates all those weights and finally returns the list of all those weights. Now here's the resample function which we used earlier already and here is the entire correction step and this has been discussed earlier too. It consists of computing the list of weights by calling the update and compute weights function which takes the measurements and then resampling particles. So that's all there is to do. And let's have a look at the main function. It initializes all the constants and the constant which is new here is the minimum correspondence likelihood and this certainly takes some care to select and I have chosen 0.001 here. And we take 25 particles, copy an identical start state to all of them and initialize our filter. Read the log data and then here that's the entire main loop. We do a prediction and a correction where this function will find the cylinders in the scan data and return a list of cylinders or measurements. Then all the remaining code is just about outputting all the particles, outputting the mean state and the error ellipse. And then also outputting the landmarks. Now outputting the landmarks is now an operation which is not quite clear because as a matter of fact every single particle now has its own landmarks. So what we do here for the purpose of visualization is the following. We have computed this mean particle value, which is the mean pose of all particles. And we now pick the particle which is closest to this mean and position. And then we output the landmarks of this particle and the error ellipses belonging to the landmarks of this particle. So keep in mind that while this mean here is a state that is computed from all the particles and which in general is different from any of our particles, the landmarks we output are the landmarks from one certain particle which we picked from our entire set of particles. So now let's see what happens if you run this. Now running this will produce the fast slam correction.txt file. Now open this and you will see the following result. So this is the trajectory which results from our fast slam filter. In this case with a total of 25 particles. Now let's run through this trajectory. In the beginning the robot stays at the same position so the error ellipses of the landmarks are getting smaller. Then as we move we see here the number of particles that spread out a little bit. We see here our typical problem of a set of particles which take a stronger left turn but eventually they die out. You also see the typical result that due to those spread out particles our errors in position and heading are larger than usual. And so as we go on we also see a typical effect here. 
So here's an additional landmark, which will stay until the end. Now if you go back, this landmark appeared here for the first time, and so it survived in some of the particles, until finally it's obviously consistently present as a landmark in those particles that are picked, because they are closest to the mean state. So, so far the result looks good, the trajectory looks a little bit jagged, however we are also having only 25 particles, so we are looking forward to taking a large number of particles to get a smoother trajectory, but we are worried a little bit about this extra landmark, which is inserted somewhere and stays until the end. In fact, as we can see, without being modified at all, which is due to the fact that after being inserted for all those positions of the robot, none of the observations of the robot is assigned to this landmark anymore. 